Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, graph this linear inequality. And what I have is y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x uh, minus 2. So when first graphing a linear inequality, the first thing we want to identify is when we graph this, are we going to have a dash or a solid line? Since this is an inequality symbol is greater than or equal to, that equal to is telling us that those solutions are also going to be equal when they lie on our line. So therefore, this is going to be a solid line that we're going to graph meaning all the points that are on that line are also going to make the inequality true. So the next thing is now we need to graph it. Well, to go ahead and graph a line, um, even if it's an inequality or an equation, <coughs> when it's in this format, the easiest way to graph is using our slope-intercept form. And basically, we need to slope-intercept form is when we have an equation you know, in this form that we want to be able to identify our slope and our y-intercept. So in this case, my slope is going to equal a negative 2 thirds. Let me put that negative in between. That could also be a negative 2 over 3, or also a 2 over negative 3. It's very important that you understand it really doesn't matter where that negative sign is when you're dealing with your slope. As far as your y-intercept, or actually even if you're just dealing a fraction or division, it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same value either way. The y-intercept in this case is negative 2. But it's also important to understand that the slope represents a ratio. Um, between the change in uh, your y, uh, the change in the distance of y coordinates, and the change by the change of the distance of the x coordinates between any two points on a line, where the y-intercept represents a point. And since it lies on the y-axis, the x value is always going to be 0. So now, to go ahead and graph, set, we're going to start with the y-intercept. Since that is a coordinate point, we're going to plot the point 0, comma, negative 2. So plotting the point 0, negative 2 is right here where this is our origin, 0, 0. All right, And then so I'm just going down two units. Now, to use the slope, what we're going to do is we're going to use that change in values of the y and the change in the values of x to be able to find our next point. So it doesn't matter. Um, usually, you want to have the negative sign in the numerator and the denominator. That's usually helpful to help you determine that. So I could go down two units, because the change in the y between the change in the y coordinates is negative 2. So that means I have to go down two units. So it's going to be down two units between my other two points and then a positive 3 units for the change in the x. So that would be over 1, 2, 3. So down 2 over 3 will give me a point over here. I could also do a change in the y being positive and the x being negative, which would be left 3. 1, 2, 3. And what you can see is either way, they're both, all these points are going to lie on the line. So therefore, I go ahead and have arrows going back and forth. And I knew it was solid, so that's why I drafted solid. Now the last thing we want to do is determine well, we know the points on the line are true, but what about the points above and below the line? Because it's an inequality. It's saying for all the, you know, these values, for y is greater than or equal to all values for negative 2 thirds x minus 2. So now what we need to do is we need to test that. So we're going to test the origin because my, but you don't have to use the origin. You can use any point that does not lie in the line. But usually using 0, 0 is going to be your easiest um, to test because anything times 0 is always 0. So therefore, I just have 0 is less than or equal to negative 2. And 0, I'm sorry, 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2, which is false. So since my test point is false, that means all the points above the line are going to be false, and all the points below the line are going to be true. So that is why we shade below the line. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your linear inequality. Thanks.